In today's video, we look at 8 tips to ensure that you have a successful solar water pump installation. Tip number 1. Do a solar water pump sizing. Most of the innovative suppliers uh, now have um, online sizing software where you can put in all your borehole specs, depth of the hole, water level, how far you want to pump, how high you want to lift the water, pipe thickness, etc. It works out friction loss and it works out your head and then it suggests a solar water pump that will do the job. Very important because if you buy a pump that's too small you're not going to get the water you need. If you buy something that's too big uh, you waste money that um, you could have saved. Tip number two, wire correctly. Yes, this sounds simple, but there's a little trick to it. The wires uh, from your pump connects to the control box. They are color coded, so you've got three colors uh, wire you, uh, on one of our ranges. It's blue, brown, and black. And then it's color coded inside the controller. So if you were to connect your pump straight to the controller, it's a very simple uh, exercise. But the submersible cable that uh, you buy in South Africa the three wires are different colors, so it's blue, red, and yellow. So what happens is a lot of people connect their pump to the submersible um, cable with a cable joint. It goes down the borehole, and now they've got the other end of the submersible cable, and they need to connect it to the controller. And they can't remember which colors they matched with each other, and this makes your installation quite tricky. If you get the sequence wrong, your pump can run backwards, and the helical rotor can come loose. What I suggest is just take your phone, make your connections in the splice kit, take a photo so then yeah, you've got that reference on your phone so when you need to wire into the controller you know exactly which color goes to which terminal. Tip number three, your panel orientation. We are in the southern hemisphere here in South Africa. We want our panels to uh, face true north so that's a little different from magnetic north but it's in the ballpark so face your panels true north and then the angle, you want to match your latitude. So you can Google the town you're in and what the latitude is. Um, and then get your degree of your panel sort of in line with that. If it's 10 degrees more or less, it is fine. So obviously there's seasonal changes. In winter, um, you will uh, a more angled panel will um, catch more sun because the sun is low in the sky. And then obviously in summer the sun is high in the sky so a flatter panel uh, can work. But it's expensive to have a, um, a mounting system that can adjust or track the sun. So somewhere in the middle is a happy medium and then at that angle make sure that you get the water you need in the season. Except especially if you're a farmer and you need a certain amount of water during winter for instance or summer depending on your crops. So we are here in Gauteng. Uh, yeah, we generally install the panels between 25 and 35 degrees and it does the job. Um, remember, the panels need to get as much sun as they can. A lot of times when a pump isn't performing it's because the panel angle is incorrect, they're flat on the ground, they're dirty, so don't just assume that the sun has to shine on the panels. The more directly they shine on the panels, the more power you produce, the better the pump will work. Tip number four, your solar panel connection. So most of the suppliers or installers will explain to you exactly what type of panel and size you can put onto the pump. We suggest that you just follow these configurations. It's not really an area where you want to experiment uh, too much. There's tried and tested combinations and get good grade 8 panels, tier 1 if you can, and install them and the pump will work as it should. The panels can be installed in series and parallel. Uh, there's different reasons, but the main thing is that your controller has a... Um, a set of parameters that it works within. So for instance if your controller has a limit of 100 volts and it requires two panels in series you can't put two panels with an, a VOC uh, open circuit voltage of more than 50 because in series uh, the voltage adds up it will blow your controller. We've got another video on our channel explaining series and parallel connections so go have a look there if you're not sure how that works and in general just follow the parameters uh, as set out by the supplier, read your instructions and make sure you operate within the limitations. Another thing we've seen is when panels are connected and uh, you switch on your pump, the controller doesn't go on. Uh, most of the time if everything else is correct, it's a polarity issue and your positive and negative is swapped around. So just make sure on the back of the panel you will see a plus and a minus for positive and negative and just make sure you trace those uh, wires correctly and you put your positive at positive and your negative at, at negative. 
Tip number five, when we work with DC solar pumps, the motor is a DC motor and the panels produce DC power. There's no inverter involved. So what happens with DC power is um, a thing called voltage drop. So if your cables are thin and they are long, then uh, your voltage can drop in that cable because of resistance that builds up. So it's important to explain to your supplier where you want to put your panels, how far you want to put them from your controller. Uh, we usually suggest 6 mm um, solar cable. If you are going further than, let's say, 60, 70, 80 meters, it might still work depending on the system you are buying, but this is where you need a voltage calculator or listen to the expert and just put in the correct thickness uh, solar cable um, there because otherwise if you have a voltage drop, not enough power will get to the pump and it will affect performance. Another place where we see this is with the submersible cable. On deeper borals, you're installing the pump maybe at 90, 100 meters. On the smaller DC pumps, you need a 6 mm 3 core cable instead of the 4 mm 3 core cable. And some people even try 2.5, but then obviously they don't get enough water and they think it's the pump not working correctly, but it's actually just voltage drop and the, pu the pump isn't getting the correct input voltage. Tip number six, your cable joint. So to connect your pump to your submersible cable, you use a splicing kit. Yeah, you're gonna connect the wires using ferrules and crimp, a crimper tool. Uh, the three wires then go into a, the splice kit and you pour in your resin. The resin sets, gets really hard, and is waterproof, so that goes down the borehole. So this is where we see a lot of issues. Um, many times when pumps don't work, people think it's the pump. In our workshop, we've seen it many times that water gets into that um, cable joint. It takes time for this resin to set. Um, some brands recommend 90 minutes. So what happens is people install, they get to that part of the installation, and then they get impatient and they don't wait the 90 minutes. They put the pump in the borehole, the pump's quite heavy and it pulls on the cable and it's not set. Water goes in there. You've done a lot of work and your pump's not working as it should. Also, if this isn't done correctly the first time, water can seep in after a few months um, as well. So, yeah, it looks like a very easy, simple step, but get the right um, cable joint kit. Do it correctly. Wait as long as you should. Just read the instructions and then you can submerge your pump in water. Tip number seven is the dry run protection. So there you get a sensor that goes down the borehole. Uh, this sensor is installed about 30 centimeters above the pump. So basically this is your dry run protection sensor. If your water level in the borehole drops to below the sensor, but still above the pump, the pump motor switches off, it protects the pump. If you didn't have that sensor, the water level will keep dropping and your pump can run dry, it can cause the motor to heat up and damage. It isn't covered by the warranty if the sensor isn't installed. So the sensor system you find on most of the smaller DC pumps. And then our last tip for today is test your pump in a drum filled with water before submerging down the borehole. A lot of people make all the connections, complete the installation and the last step, they put it down the borehole, they switch the pump on and nothing. And then a lot of times it's just a small connection error or something that's gone wrong. Now I have to pull the pump again, look for the missed error, fix that, drop it down again. So it becomes sort of a trial and error type uh, exercise, but it's very tedious because you're pulling the pump. So simple exercise, make sure you've got a drum full of water on site. Make all your connections, test your pump in that drum of water. When everything's working as it should, then you can go down the borehole. So those were eight quick tips. If you're a solar installer, I hope this helps you. If you're a farmer but um, doing a DIY solar installation, yeah, we don't want you to be frustrated on site. Get the pump in, get the water flowing, and you can do what you do best, and that is farming. So thanks for today, and see you next time.